Namaskaram. Hey, Adrian. Hello, hello. How long have you been traveling for? How long is your journey this time around? Well, uh, we started on uh, 15th of September. We did three days in and out of our center in Tennessee, along the Cherokee Nation, touching the Trail of Tears and things. But uh, 18th morning, we left. So since then, we've been completely on road. Mm, we thought we'll close it by 10th, 12th of October, but it looks like it's going to 20th. <laughs> Well, I'm really happy to be uh, here with you now and, and hear about your, your journey. And, and, and I don't know, I mean, this is sort of an a unexpected opportunity to ask you a question or two. <laughs> don't ask me difficult questions. Huh? Ask me something nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been working uh, to create an impact investment company and uh, really looking at the way our relationship to money and how mm -hmm. it affects our motivation and how it affects the world outside. And I really want to be able to um, make, make a positive impact through investment. But I, start, I sometimes wonder if that's even possible, if money itself is even, um, it, it's possible to, it, you know, diffuse the distortions that it, it, it creates with our relationship to each other, the world, and, and our values. So I just thought you might um, have some insight there. So I know there is a whole lot of uh, philosophies running in the world, how money is evil, money is this, money is that, you know, it destroys human beings. I think anything can destroy a human being if he doesn't handle it right. That, that is also true with the instrument that we call as money. So money, as we, call, as we say, it's a currency. It is only... I mean, we could have just done barter or trading between people, but as our transactions became more and more complex, we needed an instrument. So uh, this is just uh, an over-exaggeration of things that people get identified with the means rather than the end. Why does anybody seek money in the very beginning? One thing is nourishment. People want to eat well. Once that is done, lifestyles. Once that is done, it is a power trip. All right. So essentially, it's an instrument for something else. So when we have an instrument, suppose I give you a screwdriver, you can use it to fix some machine, or uh, you can use it to scratch your head. Some people, I've seen them using a screwdriver to clean their ears. They may not have their ears for very long, or uh, they may violently poke it into somebody. I'm saying every instrument is like this. The hand that holds it determines the quality of the instrument. By instrument, by itself, doesn't do anything. Money by itself doesn't do anything. It is a certain empowerment. How we use this empowerment is definitely left to us. I heard that you are trying to do investments which are sustainable and, uh, you know, which helps people to create uh, at least a little more sensitive economic uh, process. I think that is very important. It is just that Someone, one like you, another 10 like you, doing it is not enough. It is important. The world's economy itself need, becomes a more gentler economy, more compassionate economy, and of course, more sustainable. When something is gentle and compassionate, it will naturally be sustainable. Right now, our economic engine is uh, all of us got our throttles to the floor, but... Nobody has a hand on the steering wheel. <laughs> we don't know where it's going. It's simply going. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I, what I'm gathering is it's the intention, right? What we use it for. Yes. Um, the thing that I, I have an issue with is even as good as my intention is, there's so many complexities and, and, and I can't always have a full purview of what my investment, for example, how it's going to affect the world, especially with businesses that are so complex, uh, that are around the world, that are large uh, and, and complex in nature. So um, how much, how, how can I be sure that I'm investing in a company that doesn't have a lot of downstream externalities that might be bad? Uh, yes, as I said, see, the value of the instrument is only in the hand that holds it. Hand is not just an intention. It is also a competence, isn't it? Intentions are there. 
intentions may be great, but also executing it in such a way that the intention is fulfilled is also our responsibility. Is that 100% in our hands? I doubt it. Most of the time it may not be, but to the best of our ability or to the best of the abilities that are available around us, we must ensure that the intentions are fulfilled, that it doesn't, uh, what seems to be good today can be a terrible thing tomorrow after 50 years time, you know, that is always there. So uh, looking at it in, uh, looking at it in depth with a certain insight, seeing how this investment or these investments don't turn against the basic intention with which we are doing that. So one simple way is see there are many, many things happening in the world, but uh, uh, in terms of ecology, in terms of making things sustainable, various industries, technologies, no innovations coming up, much is happening. But one thing that I would like to point out to you, I want you to ponder on this is, See, everybody, if you say pollution, if you say ecological degradation, everybody says industry, the smoke coming out of the uh, chimneys and this and that and effluents going into the rivers. Yes, all these things are issues. And plastics in the oceans, plastic floating all over the place. Yes, it is all true. These things need to be addressed. But the most urgent thing that needs to be fixed is the soil. Because this 39 inches of topsoil around the world on an average, this soil determines the life of all human beings, all animals, all plants, trees, uh, birds, insects, microbes, everybody, 80% or 85% of all life on this planet lives because of this 39 inches of topsoil. But that topsoil is go going into such a level of degradation without turning that around. Everything else that we do, unfortunately may go waste even if we have the best intentions. When I say turning the soil around, right now, nearly uh, in some countries, like for example, in India, 84% of the land is tilled by the farmer. In in United States, it may be around 40% or something in that range. I'm not very sure about the number. But uh, in different countries, it's different. If you go to more populated nations, it is uh, over 70-80%. Largely about, approximately about 51 million square kilometers of land is being plowed, under plow right now in the world. This is what needs to be taken care of. In the last 50 years, the way we farm the land has taken the soil out taken the soil to such a level of degradation that desertification is happening large scale. To tell you the uh, you know, statistics which are alarming, uh, for example, in India, there is a history of 12,000 years of agriculture. It is a land where the weather and the soil has been such that we take three to four crops in a year, 12 months of the year we farm. For 12,000 years we farmed, but in 50 years, we have brought it to a place where 52% of the land is right, right now being declared as degraded soil or fallow land. 52% in 50 years' time. Because of the agricultural practices, what we call as modern agriculture, once there is population pressure, this happens like this. So turning this around is one of the vital things. So if you keep this in mind when you make investments, this will not go wrong. That's why I'm saying. If you make the organic, the soil organically rich. That cannot go wrong. There is a whole lot of investment opportunity. There's a whole lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs to enter this space and make sure the soil is rich because what we call as our body itself is the soil that we walk upon. If that is not yeah. rich, this life cannot be rich. So I'm, I'm just saying this is one of the things that you could focus on. Whatever enhances the quality of the soil cannot go wrong, that money cannot go waste. Yeah, well, one thing that I have a challenge is trying to convince investors to put their money where profits may be, maybe not as much, but the social environmental profits will be greater, you know, and people are very focused on making a lot of money that they can have as opposed to recognizing the impact or the 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 ripple of their investment out into the world so 
how do you how do you convince somebody that their investment should be beyond just profits, but should be for the planet? See, when you uh, when you term something as an investment, naturally profit is the uh, goal, isn't it? So the question is only: Are you willing to wait for a period of time to get back your money, or you want to get back? We know immediately within a year or two, whatever the expectation is. And also, how much do you get out of that? That is what you're saying. But uh, the people who handle money, their idea of growth is only more money. You can't tell that guy, make less money and be happy with it. <laughs> he doesn't listen to that. So there are many ways to uh, handle this in the sense, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the investors, wherever they come from, to transform the atmospheres in which they live so that their life gets better by investing in the region, to show them visually that this is what happens, even if it's that's done small scale. Large scale activity is happening somewhere else, let us say. Small scale, if it happens around them, maybe they will be able to recognize that and maybe able to appreciate the value of what you're saying, the value of sustainable returns that are happening in terms of cleaner air, in terms of clear, you know, pure water, in terms of a richer land, this is happening. If you, if, if we are doing it elsewhere, let's say, wherever we are doing, if you also do it in their garden and show them what, what happens and how their life changes, maybe they will be able to appreciate it more. But essentially, it's their money and uh, they think they want this much out of it. You can't help it, but uh, because they are the ones who decide that, we can, we can try to impress upon them by showing them the value of the other values of life. Because uh, for, uh, for me, <laughs> life means uh, no nutritious food, pure water, clean air. This is life because this is what makes my life tick. But uh, their idea of life is counting money in the bank, how much money, how much money. So one thing to remind everybody is uh, this is a limited amount of time what we have on this planet here, all of us. Yeah. In this limited that's, amount that's, of time, unlimited wealth means nothing. You know, <laughs> if you had unlimited amount of time, unlimited amount of wealth means something. Limited amount of time, unlimited amount of wealth means nothing. And anyway, the either FedEx or DHL doesn't take any packages or ca a container full of cash or things for you when you go. All you get is a small box, okay? So packages don't go anywhere. So if this much is uh, make everybody realize that, I think at least uh, in the later part of their <laughs> life, they may start investing in a different mode, which uh, lives beyond them, which uh, lives for everybody's well-being. Yeah, I, I'm trying to bridge that gap and show our investors, get them out of the spreadsheet, get them out of the numbers um, and get them into the experience of impact so that they feel in their experiencing self, the, the good they're doing so that they can have a return on experience, not just a return on money. And yes, um, uh, if, if they experience it in some way, you know, if it touches their life in some way, then uh, their mode of investments and how they want to put their money around may change to some extent for sure. If you think uh, I can be of any help in that direction in changing people's minds, I'm always available. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I will send you our business proposal and you can have a look. Definitely, I will. Adrian, otherwise you're doing well. Take care of yourself. You're in the East Coast, is it? I I'm very well. I actually bought a farm. So um, I am uh, I'm very much into the regenerative agriculture space and I'm looking forward to taking the, well, it's actually a piece of land and I'm going to put in place a lot of regenerative principles Where is this and land? make the soil really rich. In, Where is this in land? In Texas. In Texas, okay. Have you heard of our Kaveri calling? Right now we are working to transform uh, about 83,000 square kilometers of river basin with 5.2 million farmers. It's a massive movement. Look it up. Uh, it is a fantastic success right now, the first year, in spite of the pandemic. It has been, we've met all the targets and it has transformed thousands of farmers' lives. And above all, 
the land is much richer, uh, food is much more nutritious, and they're reaping much better financial benefit. Uh, most farmers in five to seven years' time are earning about 300 to 800% more. Yes, that's the number. Three to eight times more than what they were earning five to seven years ago because of what we call as uh, a holistic tree-based agriculture that we brought forth. We have been working with this for the last 22 years. Now it is functioning as a massive movement called Kaveri Calling. Kaveri is the name of the river uh, around which I grew up and I saw how it depleted in this 40, 50 years time. So as a part of reviving this river, which has over 120 uh, tributaries, but uh, nearly 70 of them have almost gone dry. So because almost the entire basin is under agriculture, we are seeing how to bring back trees into agriculture. And fortunately, the, we managed to, in the last six, seven years, we managed to do the necessary policy changes which will support this in the government. And right now it's running as a very successful campaign. Please look it up. I'll ask them to send some detail to you. But about uh, investments going into the right place, this is a really important area because uh, if people do not put their money in the right place, there will be no real change. I'm really glad you've taken that up. In whichever way we can support you, we're always available to you. Thank you. If you've come across any businesses as you're speaking about, please send mm -hmm. them our way and we'll take a look mm -hmm. for sure. We'll do that. Wonderful, Adrian. And if you need Thank a place to much. stay when Thank you're going you through much. Texas, you let me know. Where are you in Texas? Austin. Austin. We may be touching Amarillo probably in Texas. We're coming to Albuquerque in uh, Mexico, New Mexico, and from there to Amarillo. And then we're going to Oklahoma and back to Memphis and Tennessee. We're all, by then we would be out almost a month. We'll come to Austin okay. sometime. I like Austin. Another time. That, all the music on the street, I like that. I'm a blues fan. Yes. <laughs> you can see I'm <laughs> blues time. <laughs> Where do you keep your guitar on that uh, motorcycle? No, no, no. I never played guitar. I only, only my ears. Right now I'm trying a hand at the, what, uh, the harmonica, but it's producing all kinds of ugly sounds. I need to work on it. <laughs> well, I can give you a couple of lessons if you want. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I used to play when I was growing up in New York in the subway stations when I'd wait for the subway because of the echo. Uh -huh. So it's a oh. great uh, you know, instrument oh. to throw in your pocket. Yeah, that's the time. best thing about it. You can carry it wherever you go. So I yeah. just got one yeah. about a month ago. I'm trying to put my mouth to it and make some sounds, uh, but it's not cooperating yet. <laughs> I have to get my way around. <laughs> you just got to pucker your lips real tight so you get the one note. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a little piece that I, I'll do and send it to you. Let me see. Okay, if thank you, you can so guide much. me around that. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Well, thanks, Sadhguru, for, Thank for the you. call. Thank you. Please take Blessings. care. Have a, have a great Keep time. yourself healthy in this uh, virus times, you know, because you have, you work with big teams and other things. Make sure this is the fundamental responsibility we have, that we must stay alive through this period and ensure everybody around us stays alive. That's all the best yes, thing sir. we can do right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.